I was really digging that new run with Webby, man. Yeah, that's Got a hell of a track, part. man. I figure we might as well go ahead and get started. We're close enough to the top of the hour because once once I get into you know telling the 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 narrative, uh, time's going to get away from me. So we're just, we're we're already started. It's uh, get fact harder. Episode number thirty nine. Uh, thank you, thank you to all of the haters out there for making this episode possible. But um, yeah, so the the track of Wrens that got taken down uh, was "Sick Boy," which is the one song where Ren basically like bears his soul and exposes his own mental illness to the rest of the world in the form of song. Right. And 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 uh, in my opinion, a phenomenal song. Uh, it's one of my favorites of his. And uh, my guess, my educated guess, my uh, basically my assumption, educated assumption. There you go. Yeah. See, he eventually figures it out, ladies and gentlemen. Park us harder. Yeah. Is Let's there, get back harder. What do you say, folks? Is there something buzzing in that room? Yeah, it's... All right. That should take care of the buzz noise. There you go. That's the fan on the bottom of the gateway laptop. Oh, wow. See? That's crazy. And if I said it the wrong way, it, it the buzz, I can make it louder, mm -hmm. or I can turn it down. Yeah. But I prefer to keep my buzz at... Um, Round Stonehenge Volume 11. There you go. Um, for all you spinal tappers out there. That's a good rule of thumb. So anyway, I think the reason that they chose to remove this song is because of multiple reasons. Obviously, the, the message of the song is one of strength, right? Overcoming adversity. Um, you know, battling your own demons and, and coming out victorious the other side, right? Uh, so a lot of people can draw inspiration from something like that, number one. Number two, <clears throat> we are about to see a full court press on mental illness. My best guess is going to be immediately following the selection, possibly before, but most likely after. Oh wow! Yeah. Well, that I, that that tells the me the mental exactly health what song uh, problem in the upload. United States is about to explode. Yeah, man. With all the the Rona and and all of the mass, um, oh, what's his name? Spooks Malone fucked it all up. But it, it's like a mass psychosis. It's mass formation. Mass There's formation. no reason to put the word psychosis onto it yeah, because it's one. not a psychotic complex. Spooks Malone. It's mesmerism. Inflated the two terms and called it mass formation. Psychosis, Correct. Correct. Which, which is how you know he's a fucking enough, spook because he's out there deliberately muddying man. the water. Because Matthias is the one that explained I'm sorry, I'm worked up this week. Formation and then Spooks fucked it up. But anyways, yeah. Just a review. Because we are about getting fact harder. Um, it's uh, you know that I'm I'm just thinking I can follow Ren's lead and blow up my latest YouTube channel because um, I've got this song about child suicide called um, uh, Rectangle and Square Cube. Talking about the old rectangle pizza with the square cube pepperonis. School pizza. Right. From back in the Dizzy. We're, we're, we're talking about some day one type shizzles. You know what I'm saying, Drizzles? So, um, and I haven't I shared that before. I don't know. That might be. That might have been too heavy. Um, we might have we might have put the veto on that one. It's it happens every now about and then. Mental health, and it, you know, it, the whole song is about the spike, uh, the continuing, increasing spike in child suicide. You know, uh, 
younger than 18. Rather alarming, rather alarming. And so, you know, it, it prompted me to write the song, made a video for it, but it was on an album that I did with this kid that lived in, um, well, I'm, I'm going to just put it out there. You know, I'm not saying his name, but kid lived in Alexandria, Virginia. And oh, yes, good Lord. I do hold that against him. I would. <laughs> I mean, if you've ever been to Alexandria, you, then you know. <laughs> if you've ever been to Alexandria, God bless you. Oh, you survived. God. You're one of the lucky ones. <laughs> so, um, anyways, his part of our duo, um, we were, um, he was a bottle of water. And I, I, of course, was box of dirt. Because he's bottle of water. He's young. and Because I said, well, you know, in our collaboration, what, what, what are you? He's like, well, I'm just watering. He's like, I'm just watering a bottle. And I'm like, well, fuck it then. Well, I'm then I'm dirt in a box. And that's how we became known as bottle water and the box dirt. Um, <laughs> and I would be the boxy McDirty type dude. I'm the box dirt. It's dirt in a box. Um, and so we made this album and it's got a couple good songs on it. You played some of them. Like, I know you played the Tony Montana one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's a good one. Well, Tony, the Tony Montana, Montana on State. The, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, Big Sky. Yeah. Big Sky, because that's the one where I'm I'm kicking the marshmallow rocks with my chocolate flip flops. How can you forget those lines? I mean, that's yeah. really high when I wrote the lyrics to that song. And when he got you, the song you back, can't really the first tell. One we collaborated yeah. on. He was like, man, that. That song was some good shit. So then I made the song Cankle with him. And since he thought it was the first song was such good shit, I thought, well, hell, for the second video, I'll show a lady cleaning out the back of her septic tank truck. And there's lots of um, gooey chunks that she has to pull out with her um, special custom 20-foot handle long um, poop rake. Um and uh i kept forgetting to turn that back on that's been off since i think like the the Hayes reviews interview oops yep well now we got it back now it's back so We're back in business he, he didn't like the poop rake video and i said well what's wrong he's like man that it's like that was a good song and now the, the video is just all shitty i'm like well it's a poop truck. Of course it's going to be shitty. I mean, not everyone has sanitary sewers like Alexandria, son. Um, you know, anyways. Um, well, then um, he was like, you know, we should do like a, a slow song. Something that like, you know, we can dance to like prom and stuff like that. I was like, hmm, slow song for like kids. All right. So I wrote the love song about the kids killing themselves. <laughs> but <Boom. laughs> yeah. he didn't like that one either. Well, then he tells me where his parents are working up in Reston in Nova, you know. And oh, then God. I then I find out, oh God, that's even worse. Weenies, they're both weenies. That explains him. And um, and that's when I did the song about Mount Vernon. Um, about own a judge <laughs> and all the slaves that run away from Mount Vernon. I don't know if you've ever played that one or not. But, um, I don't know if we I have. Don't I don't know. That's another. I mean, these. Uh, this is a very Dude, rare. You have like a thousand album. songs. I know. This is like a rare unpublished album of like secret Yona songs. That are wild and crazy. And other than Big Sky, I don't know that any of this other shit's even gotten out of there. Hmm. I mean, I got Migrante di Lampedusa, the song I sing in Italian. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, think I think you have played that one. No, I think we have played that one. Yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm we've done sure the one we where I 
where I do the cantare in Italiano. <laughs> per favore. Um, uh, let's see. And it's got the... Oh, what's the cartoon with fucking Goku? Dragon Ball Z. Yeah, Dragon Balls. Uh, it's that song's called Master Roshi Dragon Balls Deep. Um, that's wild. Yeah, there's a lot of, and 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 it's got the uh, the first track on that album, Alrededor del Mundo, which has uh, got samples of the song Ruiner. From the downward spiral by Nine Inch Nails. Not to be confused with Eraser final remix. I was wondering from, when you were going to get to that. Spiral, which I'm looking forward to here in a couple of weeks because, uh, to <laughs> remind folks, we will be celebrating with Hammer in one hand and Sickle in the other all week next week mm -hmm. for the Communist Labor Day celebration. Since they wanted to move Labor Day from May to September, fuck it, we're taking the whole week off. Um, oh, it's, but it's, uh, me, it's a new uh, I'm planning edict. on doing a show yeah. Monday night to make up for last week. And we're going to be doing the Peasants podcast every two weeks. Yeah. It's all you get. We're we can, going to Fortnite. It's yeah, we can, do, uh, we can do We can do a Get Fact Harder next game. week if you want. Like, I'm not huh? against that. I said, we can do a Get Fact Harder next week if you want. I'm not against that. Uh, That's up to you. Yeah, we you can You think pop about in. it. Let me know later. We can pop in for a Get Fact Harder next Thursday because I have a feeling. Some shit's going to be going a, down? A, yeah, a I have a feeling too. Um, that a major shoe is going to drop between now and next Thursday, knock on wood. Oh, yeah. Anything you want to share with the class? Going to be some major stuff. I, I just politically, I'm talking about in, in the clown stuff. Yeah. But I, I do have something to share with the class, actually. I got a letter from. Ooh, it's mail uh, time twice tonight. You guys uh, scored. You've got mail. And it's from Frank LaRose, Ohio Secretary of State. I probably shouldn't be showing my address that close. Yeah, I, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't do that. I did, as a matter of fact, I didn't do that. I made sure to cover up the address. Oh, good. Yeah. I just showed well, the anyways, postage stamp. This is my official absentee ballot. But I always vote in person. But I guess now... Now you can do both. I can vote now and vote. That's first, right. I've got a couple of dead relatives I need to vote That's right. for. You, you I might want to vote. I know how you they know. vote politically. I you, know their politics haven't changed. They're dead. Right. So. You might want to just vote a couple of extra times just to make sure that they take. Oh, man. Because you the, never know. You know the first, first couple of votes might not actually register. So you just do you know that reminds me. I saw more Trump crows today and killer fucking Trump flags. What <laughs> Trump crows. Uh, with the two middle fingers and you missed. Is that what you're calling them now, Trump crows? Yeah the 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 poster board Trumps. Who fucking does that, man? That's I don't know. That's that's weird. bizarre. That definitely sounds like Midwestern behavior. We're going to put oh a cardboard God. visage of our You've favorite politician on the porch. You've got to be fucking kidding me. What? Is it a, is it a summons? Dear voter. No, Ohio, it's Secretary of State. It wouldn't be a summons. The, the, here's a, a, a letter to me from the Ohio Secretary of State who's in charge of our elections here. Dear voter, Ohio has long been a national leader in making it easy to vote and hard to cheat. But I, yeah, I can't. I'm going to stop there. I'm going to stop right the fuck there. Source? Okay. All right. Where's it at? It's time to get back to hard. Right, let me find my fucking bean footage. Piss me off now, man. Shit ain't cool. Michael Callahan. You know, I've heard they don't like uh, they don't like it when people cheat in the elections in Ohio, Yona. Ohio voting 
Candle. Blam. That's his name. Thought. Oh, come on, man. The suspense is killing me. Let's see. Was his name not Michael Callahan? No, it's your search engine. That's the problem. Haven't I sent you the the uh, the fucking skeleton key for the internet? Have I not sent that to you before? Oh, that, that, there it is. Michael Connell. I did have the wrong name. Oh, I'll send it to you anyway, just in case you need it in the future. Oh, I got it. I got it. Michael Connell. Dude, this thing can find anything on the internet. It is unreal. Bro. And it comes up first page, too. It's what it's fuck? fucking awesome. Mike Connell. Oh, I forgot to post that link for the folks in the chat. I'm sorry about that, you guys. Uh. Oh. All right, I guess we'll go to fucking. What? What's Man, going on? I, I used to watch these motherfuckers all the time, and I, I even hate to use it, but fuck it, man. It's probably the best thing I'm gonna find so far. But god damn, you you really disappoint me, fucking democracy. Now I used to watch Amy Goodman and Juan Gonzalez all the time before they before their brains were broken. Anyway, they, they just turned into like MSNBC light or something. Like the one with the Splenda instead of the Super Lows. It's still poison. Yeah, but, but it's all poison. Anyway, th this is what I'm trying to talk about. So, where did I throw that stupid fucking letter? Hard to cheat my ass, Frank LaRose. I got something for you, Secretary of State. Oh, we're doing that? Hold on, let me switch over. I was in Columbus like two hours and 15 minutes ago, motherfucker. And let's roll the bean footage, uh, Drizzle. This is we're going to talk about Michael Connell, internet Wait. strategist, who was set to testify in a case alleging election tampering in 2004. A top Republican internet strategist who was set to testify in a case alleging election tampering in 2004 in Ohio has died in a plane crash. Mike Connell was the chief IT consultant to Karl Rove and created websites for the Bush and McCain electoral campaigns. He also set up the official Ohio state election website reporting the 2004 presidential election returns. Connell was reportedly an experienced pilot. He died instantly Friday night when his private plane crashed in a residential neighborhood near Akron, Ohio. Michael Connell was deposed one day before the election this year by attorneys Cliff Armbeck and Bob Fitrakis about his actions during the 2004 vote count and his access to Karl Rove's email files and how they went missing. Velvet Revolution, a nonprofit investigating Connell's activities, revealed this weekend that Connell had recently said he was afraid George Bush and Dick Cheney would, quote, throw him under the bus. Cliff Arnbeck had also previously alerted Attorney General Michael Mukasey to Why the would he think from something like that Connell. might he happen? He refused to, quote, take the fall. Well, Mark Crispin Miller joins us now, a professor of media culture and communication yeah, at New York University, this, this the author of West several books, including Loser Take All, Election Fraud. Anyways, yeah. um, I, I mean, we got the useful information. We got the gist of it. We're trying to get back harder and, um, yeah, fuck him. Uh, but anyways, um, Michael Connell had just testified in the lovely district of criminals there. Washington, as they call it down here, Washington City. Um, and uh, he testified. I could find the C SPAN footage if I'm really feeling motivated, where he talks about, you know, 
He's scared the call brother's going to have him killed. And then he went to fly home and his plane just like crashed on the way home. So, um, I might count that as a W for Carl Rove. Yeah, sounds like it. Um, Score yet one again, for Turd Blossom. Uh, you know, let this be a lesson to whistleblowers. This is yet another story of a whistleblower testifying and then like dying. <laughs> you know, am, am I right, Boeing? Anyways, um, <laughs> Oh, speaking of which, I did see on the news there was a very turbulent flight. Oh, yeah. And uh, I don't know, like two or three dozen passengers were severely injured. Nobody was killed, but yeah, 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 yeah. Made it on the plane. Oh, yeah. It's uh, so if you are a regular listener of the No Agenda show, you already have a pretty good idea what's going on. Uh, this is because they have altered flight paths from what they had been in the past. See, the way it used to be is the the flight path would take the flight out of the way of turbulence, if at all possible, right? Because it's disturbing for the passengers. It can be disturbing for the crew. Uh, well, it can be potentially deadly, fuel. right? But, but that it, burns more fuel, Drew. Correct. Correct. It burns more fuel. So in uh, an effort to be more eco-conscious and uh, sustainable and, and diverse and inclusive and all that bullshit, um, they have changed the flight paths now uh, to where they're, they're doing more straight line flight paths. And instead of um, coming in, let's see. What's the best way to explain this? Because I'm not I'm not good at explaining this part of it. But one of the main things that they've altered is the approach to the runway on descent. Instead of like coming down at a steep angle now, what they're having planes do is cut a couple of their engines and kind of coast in to the runway. And again, the problem with doing that is when you hit those rough pockets of air, it can get, you know, pretty dicey, pretty fast. Cause you're just kind of up there in the air at the mercy of whatever force may be around you. And of course, in order to do a glide in landing, you have to already be below the 25. So, Correct. you know, so much for riding which in the is night, where a lot of the turbulence rests correct at an altitude for yeah it's fucking retarded two hours but but again it's an effort <clears throat> to try and get people to stop flying they say it's to help save the planet but everybody knows that's bullshit and i don't care if youtube takes this video down too everybody knows the climate crisis is bullshit Now, how? I warned you, I'm a little worked up this week. Hmm. I think, I think I may have uploaded that somewhere. Let me look on Odyssey. Now's your chance, Odyssey. Let's go to uploads. Hmm. What are you looking for? The, uh, the we'll call it the high school prom song. <laughs> uh, I mean, as long as we're shitting on stuff, that's a, that's as viable a target as any. Uh, it's gonna be before that, dude. I'll tell you what. It's I'm I'm a bit amazed. All right, so I've been reading for the past I don't know couple of weeks. I've been reading this book, right? Which was, uh, it's so it's basically about uh, Freemasonry in America. Like the history, cool. it's a, a brief history of Freemasonry in America is probably the best way to describe it. Not a detailed history of Freemasonry in America at all. At More all. like a, a all. sexy tease of a tone. Right, like right. More like, uh, I would call it like a whitewash. 
of Freemasonic history in America. Oh. But, but, but it really? does provide uh, a good reference to a lot of the symbolism that is prevalent in the architecture, in the money, uh, in, in things like the Great Seal, like all the, all the regalia of Empire. <laughs> Like it's for that stuff. It's a fucking priceless resource. But I have a feeling if I were to look up the authors of this and their, you know, um, civic affiliations, sounds like they're tied into them. Yeah, I'd I'd probably find out they were Masons. Right. But it's well, still interesting. It still, it's there are some interesting nuggets in there. They spend a a far too much of the book focused on on Dan Brown and his fucking fictional bullshit series. Oh. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's but kind of other than that, it's been uh it's been it, pretty it, it interesting. It does not appear that well I, I now there's El Reldador El Mundo. There's an album. There's a song from that album. But it ain't on there. Do, 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 do. Trombone noise. All right. What were we looking for again? Rectangle and square cube. What was that? We I need a car crash noise? Up. Stop tailgating me, you piece of tea bag. Don't let her hear me calling her bitch you. All right. All right. So I blogged in the bitch you. Yes, oh yeah, indeed. we are actually we are live on uh, BitChute right now. Shout out to everybody tuning in on BitChute tonight. You guys, fuck yeah, you're our quiet children because they yeah. they don't have a live stream chat. Yeah, yeah. So we don't get to hear them bitch at us while we're screwing things up live on the air. Huh? It's live radio, ladies and gentlemen. Um, Mistakes happen. There's Usually this, makes uh, things more entertaining. Your price. Wow, the Abby Hoffman song. Wow, I forgot about remixing Abby Hoffman. Uh, Have I heard that one? I don't think so. <laughs> I made so many songs. Wow. It's not on Bitch You either. Uh oh. Wow. I, did I even know that you have a Bitch You channel? Uh, it's under I Iona. Hey, that's me. Um, Maybe I did. I don't know. Let's see. Rectangle and square cube. It's funny because our subscribers on BitChute like doubled in the last month. I found Just it. Out of nowhere. And it's marked as private on Rumble, but it's about to go live. <laughs> Uh-oh. No, I'm not doing commercials, though. Well, let's try this again. Oh, my goodness. All right. All right. So, because you were talking about, you know, not... Because I figure if I post this song on my on my latest YouTube channel... Oh, yeah. Definitely. <laughs> it's the Definitely. We're going to have to talk about that at some point tonight. Because I'm still salty about that. <laughs> I don't understand how we get a copyright strike no. for a song oh. that I just fucking made. Oh like, yeah, 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 like well, it when, was, when uh, I, and I hadn't even heard it yet. So the like, when when no we one get, had heard it. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. When geez. when we get those strikes, <laughs> it's always like it doesn't affect the channel. It doesn't affect anything. <laughs> doesn't affect people's ability to see it. Like I don't even know why they're there because they're like. Well, this is copyright copywritten content, but the the owner allows you to use it, so it's okay. I'm like, all right. So yes, why are you I even am, bringing my I'm attention a to it? Owner, and I'm giving myself permission to use my own stuff. Well, exactly. <laughs> it's Christ. fucking retarded. All right. So this is a love story about Jocelyn, the girl from um, trigonometry class that. Um, Anyways, I, I I don't want to spoil the end. <laughs> this is called um, Rectangle and Square Cube from Bottle Water and the Box Dirt. 
Oh, so this is it's okay. time for lunch. Your teacher will walk you in a line to the cafeteria. <laughs> Smoke more it's than important weed. when we're in the hallway that we are still quiet. Hey, all my kids are going back to school. And you need to school. listen and follow your teacher's directions. Time to go back to school, kids. When you need help, get help. Figure it out. Don't be boxed in the dirt. Be water in a bottle. Oh, my sweet Jocelyn. Help by my locker, but just not the talker. Trig honey dips, just shudder in my soul. Bell rings, time to eat those things. Oh, folding picnic tables. Myths, legends, and fables. Never a welcome spot, so damn ready to split. Fully stings, pluck heartstrings, and sit. Never a welcome spot, so damn ready to split. Dinner is served, but not what I deserve. Cell phone, hell, home, blue to YouTube. Pizza and rectangle, pepperoni and square cube. Now cobwebs in the lunchroom, hot heads of doom. Goofy about the koofy, only schooling the Zoom. No more IRL. Most begin to fail. Ropes and razors. Cat memes with lasers. Smothered in neglect. Hog cops with tasers. Prison and bedroom walls. More online calls. No light breaks the darkness. Sign and cosign. Checked out crying shout left me behind Oh Jocelyn <laughs> We're from dinner again Dinner is served but not what I deserve Cell phone hell hope blue to YouTube Pizza and rectangle, pepperoni and square cube. Now cobwebs in the lunchroom, hot heads of doom. Goofy about the koofy, only schooling via Zoom. No more IRL. Most begin to fail. Ropes and razors. Cat memes with lasers Smothered in neglect Hog cops with tasers Prison and bedroom walls More online calls No light breaks the darkness Sign and cosign Check out crying shout left me behind Oh just Some pizza. Checked out crying shop, left me behind. There you go. They just cut you out a slice. <laughs> they heard you. <laughs> there you go, folks. You can't say Yona never did an indie album. That was pretty album. damn good, actually. <laughs> like, there's, uh, you could dress that up a little bit. You could yeah. add uh, add some more uh, into into that uh, that tapestry of sound. I mean, imagine what what will happen. I mean, when it's I... not bad the way it is, but you can you can spruce it. Imagine up what bit. happens when I give that song to Dead Fella. Oh my goodness! I, I made that song with a fucking eighteen year old kid from Alexandria. You know what I'm saying? Wow. <laughs> That was pretty good, though. I I dug it. I liked it. 
which uh, uh, it was it was given biscotti like all kinds of flashbacks. <laughs> like he's, talking, he's like, oh, my God, I remember that pizza. Oh, my God, I remember those. Tra- oh, it looks like a fucking prison. Yes. Yes. The yeah. American uh, public educational uh, structure is uh, modeled on the, the same um, design as uh, the, the penal system. It's because everything's dual use, right? Those buses can be yellow or black. It's the same bus. Doesn't matter what color it is. It's the same fucking bus. So, so I have a song. It's like that, Yona, because um, we're the same age, right? You remember yeah. fluoride treatments in school? Yeah, I haven't drank all oh, that nasty shit. They give us cups to drink. Oh, they gave you shit to drink. We had the yeah. the thing where you had to put the tray in your mouth and leave it there for like five minutes. Oh no, it was like a little Dixie cup, and you're supposed to swish it in your mouth and spit it out. But most just like swallowed it because they're like, "Oh, it's minty." Um, I mean, it really goes good with lead paint chips. Um, yeah. You know, mix your aluminum, your fluoride, and your lead all together. It's like a chemistry experiment. That's right. All your heavy uh, metals in one shot. So where is ah? Oh, there it rock, is. Rock, rock, Owen. Sun shadows. By Kingsley Dennis. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's the rearranged version. Okay, so I want the original. uh, Let's go over here. Uh, What are you trying to find? Aha! So there's the rearranged version. Okay, here it is. All right, so I'm going to try to read this in my British voice. Um, And then uh, I'm going to give you a a taste of this song I'm working on with uh, Deadfella and Dr. Dennis. It's a work in progress. And... uh, Anyways, uh, let's see here. Okay, so here is the original read in my uh, Dr. Dennis voice. <laughs> I'm not as good at the parody voices as Rant Cast. I'm just saying. Shout you got to work on it. You got to practice. Got to work on it. Yeah. Not he really same. only does the one voice. Sun Shadows. Not the same as in days past, when the sky a beautiful blue and the sun a golden yellow. These were the times before ashtray gray skies and the haze that sits as a halo around the light dimmed orb. Flowers have stopped leaning in the direction of the sun as bees act bewildered until the day is done nature knows that something is amiss a stolen kiss from her garden for it is look for it is like looking at the sun through a frosted glass magic has drained from the celestial deity with geoengineering and radio radiation management for the light is colder in the shadows of the sun where has the solar goddess gone? Gone. Where has the solar goddess gone? Wow, I can't even read. Something runs amuck within the starlights of our skies, and something is missing from the radiance of our days. Akhenaten knew it best when he built the Temple of the Sun to worship the Sphere of Ra before his reign was done, and history now buries this Pharaoh who brought the world to light. The day becomes night in a world without sight. Sunless silence amid the shadows of a golden gold, of a golden cold glaze. The ending days of summer's final haze. Kingsley Dennis. All right, so that's the original. And uh, when I went to sing it, you know, I sang it two or three times, the original arrangement. And 
and I was just stumbling all over the place. So I had to rearrange them. And uh, here's the rearranged version. Um, As in days past, today's not the same. Former sun beaming golden yellow flame. When the sky was such a beautiful blue, olden times before ashtray gray skies flew. In the haze hangs a halo around our light-dimmed orb. Flowers have stopped leaning in the direction of the sun. The bees act so bewildered until the day is plump done. Nature knows something's amiss from her garden a stolen kiss. So I just changed the word order a little bit, you know, to make it rhyme. Right. You know. Well, and, in, uh, and to put it into uh, a rhythm. Right. Not that Kingsley um, didn't have a rhythm, but his was kind of all over the place. Well, Kingsley's like spoken word. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, you know, because I, I put this. Um, well, it, it started out. I, I got the lyrics and that fellow was like, well, hey, you know, try singing this. I was like, um, well, what do we got for music? Uh, oh, we don't have music for it yet. Oh, OK. I'll make up something real quick. Don't worry about it. <laughs> and so uh, I came up with this theme. Here, let me move my microphone around. Uh, let's see here. Oh, are we doing the, the live show? Yeah, let's see here. All right. That's like the thing. Huh. I don't know if you can hear that or not. Most of it, yeah. It, it, some yeah. something happens with that microphone, like when when it gets a a, a hot peak, it like it yeah. drops several decibels and kind of stays yeah. there. So it's, it's weird. like it was coming in real good, and then I guess there was a, a note that was a bit too hot, and it dropped it down like- a little bit. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we could still hear it. It was just quieter. Well, let's see if I can go over here to my content. There it is. So, oh, I can play it. It's just private. And nobody else can play it. So it'll right. still be that's, secret. That's what private means. All right. You well, can then it see shouldn't it. be nobody else. And, can. Still and usually, give it's, me a, a you can give out the link, and people, other people, can look at it that way. But only the people with the link can see it. All right. So that's how private works. As opposed to what YouTube did last week to the episode of Friday Night Open Lines that was uploaded the following morning. They just decided to yank that fucker right away and be like, nobody gets to see this. So, that fella is recording different parts for this song. Yeah. And I've done like two parts in MIDI for the strings and for the backing chords. And then I played a harmony and a melody on the piano. And then of course I've, I've already sang the vocals and then he's doing lead guitar, rhythm guitar, bass, percussion, adding some other stuff. And so, um, as we were sending stems back and forth, I went ahead and made the music video for it and put them on the credits, but the song isn't done yet. So I just stuck in the preliminary version or what I normally call first cut, you know, whenever I'm making a song and it's the first version, it's the first cut, right? It's the rough, you know, it's, it's when you first carve in the log like with a chainsaw and right. not a knife. So, you know, um, some people can carve really well with a chainsaw. I'm just saying, um, 
Yeah. And so people, I read the video. Some people use chainsaws to carve ice and, and just, I just make the most beautiful images. And I just the preliminary first cut uh, as a placeholder for the audio on it while he's adding his parts. And I sent him the video and I asked him, what do you think of the video? And he immediately was commenting about the audio. And he was like, well, I, I don't have anything on this audio, but you've got me credited on the video. I was like, yeah, because this is going to be one of our songs from the new album. He's like, yeah, but I'm not on this. I was like, that's just placeholder audio until we get the full song. Uh, you know, but I wanted to get the video done because I've been working in Columbus, Ohio, and it's like two and a half hours drive north of here, but I call it Lambeau Town where I've been working. It's Easton, New Albany area. Of, oh, okay, uh, so they got money. Columbus, and like literally I was texting the wife of like I'm behind a Ferrari and a Lambo is tailgating me. It's like and I'm in this little what I call the the Ormiguita de Plata. Damn um, in Columbus. Wow. Up in up That's, in Columbus uh, in the six one four. Okay. I didn't know That's Columbus had it like that, but I guess tonight. all right. Why, uh, sure. at, you know from nine o'clock to ten o'clock tonight I was nowhere to be found in the chats because I was hauling ass doing about 80 miles an hour coming flying down us route 23 from columbus you were racing a ferrari out. weren't you uh and when i looked down and i saw it was almost seven o'clock i was like oh shit i'm like 140 fucking miles from my house i should probably start heading south this is going to be cutting it close but then i passed everybody all the way home so i made it here in record time um, don't yeah. recommend that folks, but anyways, I would I'm ask really you excited. what the speed limit is, but I don't want it on the record. So don't tell it's, me uh, for most of it. It's actually 70 miles per hour. Okay. So you're only doing about 10 miles over. That's fine. Uh, and I was doing like 75, 79. Um, otherwise you just get ran over because most people are doing like 90 and a hundred. It's wow. It reminded me of like when we were driving in Oklahoma, um, which by the way, hey, Oklahoma City, I want my fucking hubcap back, you fuckers, assholes. Anyways, um, so I explained profusely to Dead Fella that uh, this is just the music video that I put together. And, you know, when I dreamed about the melody to the song, I dreamed about the old floods and everything. And so I was thinking about there must be a terrible flood in Bangladesh or something. So I'll I'll, I'll make a song where I've got Bangla in, in the text, you know, because I like doing that. And, uh, and I said, apparently somewhere is flooding in Bangladesh. He's like, well, it's covered with rivers. And I not look sure enough. The second largest city in all of Bangladesh and their main port on the Indian Ocean itself is called um, Chittagong or Chattagram or they've named they've renamed all the towns. So like Bombay is Mumbai, that's in India, and Dhaka is now Dhaka, just spelled different. But hmm. Chittagong is now Chattagram. Uh, newsflash. So um, Chattagram. So I'm like, we'll I call thought this that was a new app Starboard all the kids were renamed. using. Or Chattagram and uh, yeah. like chat on I'll Telegram. Send you a Chattagram. You know, the only thing about Chattagram, if you say Le Chattagram, mm -hmm. could get you arrested in France. Ask the CEO. Of well, Telegram. it also makes you sound like a douche. Right. But I mean, isn't arresting the CEO of Telegram because he doesn't censorship hard enough? That's pretty douchey and faggoty. But again, it's France. You expect it's Macron. That. Yeah, what do you expect? Did you expect him to be a gentleman? Did you and, expect and him to be a silent. man of his word? He's the, a Frenchman. The, uh, the, the R is silent. It's actually pronounced Macon. M-A-C-O-N. Macon, which in French means my Day. asshole. My asshole. Right. Macon. Emmanuel Macon. Manuel, my asshole. Which, it makes sense. The oh, so R he enjoys the reach around. Macron. Yeah. It is a vrai salopard. 
<laughs> Je ne sais. Anyways, um, that was so. Did you did you hear how that went down? Yeah. Oh, like, he do you, took like, do you know the the all the, the, for his speech? I ain't got nothing to do with this. No, 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 Yes. Yeah. 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 All of that. But here's, here's what like most of the media outlets are not telling people because Durov has a uh, citizenship in three countries. He's a citizen of Russia, a citizen of France. And I think the other one was like United Arab Emirates or something. Right. Oh, wow. So he's, that he like is Eric a Prince French is so citizen. Which means he is subject to the laws of the country of France. Oh, okay? well, that's where he fucked up. Well, no, that's not where he fucked up. Where he fucked up was Being accepting Russian. the lunch invitation of the president of France, Emmanuel Macron. Oh, because when he landed, yes, when he landed at the airport. He was then informed that there wasn't going to be any lunch. And instead, we're taking you in, you're getting processed, and you're going to be speaking to some folks. You might even get a cage. Oh, so this was a total setup by Fuck Macron. yes, it was a total so setup. Week, everything else was, a, was not just a lie. It was a motherfucking lie. Yeah. Oh, that, yeah, I did not know that. But yeah. then again... That's why the show is called Get Fact Harder. And you're only going to find it on Liberty Radio. If you just found us now, hey, don't worry about it. Welcome home. Make yourself comfortable. That ottoman, nobody's using it. Just push the little weed rolling trays off to the side. Throw your feet up. Make yourself all comfy one piece. Settle in for a, a good one because we've still got another hour of this stuff and I guess I'm going to play a little teaser of this song for the drizzle that I swore I would not play. Um, anyways. Okay. Um, uh, so yeah, but I'm not, I, I'm I want not... you to hear the reinterpretation of the Dr. Dennis um, vocally by the Yona here. Yeah. So here's a teaser of Sun Shadows. The forthcoming song, which is also going to have vocals with Dr. Dennis. And oh, there's yeah. a lot of shit that's still going to be on this song. So that's why I shouldn't be playing this right now. Magic's fully drained from the celestial deity. Light is colder in the shadows of the sunbeam. Where tell me where? So the God is gone Where is she gone? Something from the muck in the starlights of our sky Something missing from the daily radiance of our lives All right, now let me cut to this other part huh. Of the sun So bewildered, oh, times have stopped leaning in the direction of the sun. The bees act so bewildered until the day is plundered. Makes you know something amiss from a god stolen kiss. Looking at the sun through a frosty glass Geo-engineered radiation managed here by the ruling class Magic's fully drained from the celestial deity Light is colder in the shadows of the sunbeam Tell me where's the soul that got his gone? Where's she gone? 
Something from the mug in the starlight of the sky. Something missing from the daily radiance of our eyes. I cannot do it best. We're building the temple of the sun. <laughs> to worship the sphere of Ra before his ray was done. History now buries the Pharaoh. <laughs> Of the world to light Flowers will stop leaning in the direction of the sun These act so bewildered until the day is plumb done Ain't you know something amiss From a dark stone kiss Alright, so there you go you didn't see it or hear it yet. <laughs> see what? Hear what? What are you talking about? <laughs> I'm excited about that song. I thought we were doing dead air to make the people that don't like dead air uncomfortable. Is that not what we were doing? All right. Oh, man. Oh, I'm, I, I, I've been holding back. I got big news. Big news? Do you, do you well? Yeah, do you want to save it for the second hour? Because yeah. we still got five minutes. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Stay tuned for the second hour. Big news from the Yona. Um, some more live gig appearances. Oh, nice! I'm excited. I can't wait to hear it. Uh, <clears throat> It'll be In worth meantime, hanging around for. Um. My God, it was. <laughs> Last two or three days in a row, all the way up in like Columbus, it's been like heat index over a hundred all day long, like hotter than fucking balls. Yeah, it's crazy. I'm like, mm -hmm. it, it's it's been just sweltering hot for like the last week. Like, mm -hmm. it's really bizarre. Here it is, like almost September, and I'm like waiting for a cold snap, and it's just it's coming. Ugh. We just got it. So it's on its way to you, and it will get there. Uh, but it's probably going to be uh, a few more days at least. We I'm had. Really kind um, of, I'm kind of nervous about the impending cold front because where there's such a heat dome over this part of the country, it's so unseasonably hot and humid and warm. Man, whenever a cold front comes up the valley, if it if it hits within the next day or two, oh, we're fucked, buddy. I don't know if it's going to be the next day or two. Like I say, it uh, might be another week or so because we our fucked. heat wave and was. It, it's going to be just. I want to say it was about ten days. Fucking storms, like the kind of storms. That, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Why is that? We lost power earlier yeah. because of the storms that came rolling through. Our heat wave broke couple days ago like i mean we were hitting we were hitting legit uh triple digits uh towards the end of it and it was it was like 10 days consecutive like that's the hottest uh i've seen it here it reminded me of acapulco that's how hot it was like yeah, you go out the land of endless summer yeah you go out in the sun for like five minutes and that's like that's good like that's that's what it reminded me of, um, but that ended. Like I I literally remember going to to uh, feed the beast out back and stepping outside and being like, "Holy shit, the air's changed." Well, there's a lot of fucking and we rain hitting. I don't think we've hit like ninety Roanoke. since. Wow, from Beckley to Roanoke to Richmond, all the way up through. DC and back over to freaking Martinsburg and back down through Harrisburg. Harrisburg yeah. is just all fucking red, just nuts. Yeah. So fucking rain right now. There's a lot of activity right now, especially the southeast. That's crazy. Yeah. Well, let's look at the St. Louis, Missouri radar. Why? Yeah. All right, and what's going on over there? Heat advisory. 
Why is it saying wow. Vegas? Wow. It's, it's what the heat index right now, 98 in St. Louis. Oh, at fuck that. At 11 o'clock at night, man. Fuck it. Yeah. Me. Yeah. I believe it. Oh, there I it is. There for a summer, yeah. There Dude, it is. St. Louis okay. is disgusting in the summer. Don't we ever go found, there in the summer. We have found the motherfucking cold front, and it is stretching from Des Moines down through Manhattan, Kansas, yeah. all the way down toward the panhandle of Oklahoma. And I'm going to give it about two days, and it's going to be on top of Cincinnati and Louisville. So, yeah, we're we're about to get punched right in the fucking mouth, dude. Probably. Oh, it's going to be nasty. It's going to be nasty. As a, we, had, we had storms today come rolling in off the Gulf. It's just so unseasonably hot and humid. We've got all the ingredients just waiting for some of that. Oh, you probably have some tornadoes, available yeah. Potential energy, that cape. Uh-huh. Yeah, well, we had, I don't know what the what the actual wind speeds were, uh, but we had gusts today. We had strong gusts. I would say probably easily 30, 40 miles an hour. See, so across Ohio and eastern Kentucky, and you get these strong straight-line winds that come right across the glacial plains called derechos. Oh, yeah, yeah. Derechos. Yeah. Viento violente. It's basically the American haboob. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty much an American haboob. Totally. Like that one video. Um, I just enjoy saying haboob. All right. Let's see. Iowa. All right, so it's it's second hour. What's your, right. what's your big news? Wow. All right. Is this it? Yeah, this is a haboob. Well, a haboob is actually a dust storm. Well, yeah. Oh, God. Not Sherrod Brown again. Oh, good. I can skip that. Nobody cares about Sherrod Brown. Fuck off, dudes. Are you oh, sharing man. something? Well, that sucks. Um, maybe it was in. Okay, Iowa Derecho. I'm trying to find a, this video that I've seen before. It was fucking insane. I think I've seen the same video. I think there's just like one video that goes around and everybody watches it. Uh. Like, did you hear about the uh, the attack on the Russian uh, oil depot by Ukraine earlier this week? Did you happen to catch that? Yeah, damn. Yep. Okay, this is a different video, but this is good. This is from real people. All right, let's go here. Screen share. Dewitt, Iowa, extreme derecho. It's like a two minute video, but it's live. All right, it's live. Uh, and then I'll fill you in on uh, my upcoming gig tomorrow at um, Mozart's Patisserie and Cafe. Ooh, that All sounds right. fancy. Oh, it is. Ballet falls in the All right, here comes the break, though, folks. Come on, skip, though. Wind, they get violent. That's not a tornado, that's just a regular. Power brought live with. Yeah, I can say about nine I think out. I've probably experienced this before. Yeah. Down the pole. Yeah. Well, it's basically like a land hurricane. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much what it is. 
power line's about to go. Power line's down. I don't want to be too good for now. Uh, nobody beats the hut. Not even the derecho. That's right, man. Well, anyways. That's pretty wild. Damn. So it pushed down a couple of shit up. Mother Nature said, Fuck this Dairy Queen right tree. here. And it broke some trees. No, yeah. Nothing like. Alright. Let's see here. Apparently, apparently, we're doing Yona's clip show this week, ladies and gentlemen. I, I was not informed of this. We don't do production meetings or anything. We just kind of show up and, and pull it out of yeah. our ass every week. So. Okay, so there was this one time yeah. right off of Interstate 30 in the middle of downtown oh, fucking Dallas. Hi. Oh, <laughs> fuck ads. Fuck a bunch of ads. Bunch of ads. Your... Fuck that shit. At, at a marshalling yard. Uh... So, you know, it was like right off an exit of I-30 where they had all the semi-trailers and the, and the semi-trucks would go down there and slide in and lock it into the fifth wheel and pull out. Hundreds and hundreds of semi-trailers where a tornado touched down and immediately began sucking semi-trailers. Some of them still had the cabs attached and began throwing tractor trailers across the interstate and all over neighborhoods in Dallas. And that was weird. I, I yeah, guess. roll the bean footage. Terrifying yesterday. Amazing that no one was killed. I know, isn't it? There were 18 tornado reports, Ooh. George. Six to 13 reported on the ground. That and was two like major tornadoes striking the area. And as you say, it is shocking that there were no deaths. Ooh. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. But the pictures are mind boggling. Look at these right now. These tractor trailers, we're going to show you. Go they look like screen. Tonka trucks being thrown through the air right yeah, there. Yeah, and then they're piled right. up. There it is, right there, right after the massive yeah. twisters. They were just flying through the air and twirling. And entire neighborhoods were torn up. We have uh, the roof ripped off from a home, the entire bedroom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let, let's go back to the, the semi trucks again. Mm -hmm. These right now, these tractor trailers we're going to show you, they look like Tonka trucks being thrown through the air right there. And then they piled up. God damn it, Drizzle. <laughs> that reminds me of being like 10 years old. Fuck, Ooh. man. <laughs> that's why I try wow. to avoid Dallas. <laughs> that's, I don't that's want a to good see reason. tractor trailers spinning across the freeway like Tom's I have truck. never enjoyed any time that I've spent in my life in Dallas. Not a single second. I don't expect that that's ever going to change. Which is so, why I was more than happy to drive around Dallas on the way to Pueblo. I was like, yeah, let's stay as fucking far away from that shit as possible. So I've discovered, you know, where I'm door dashing in West Virginia and Kentucky and Ohio. Uh, you know, I've, I've learned where all the different music stores are and hotels with pianos. So that whenever I'm somewhere close to piano, whenever I get a break, I'll go and I'll take my break on a piano bench. And, uh, you know, <clears throat> you know, just think of it as um, performing pianist publicly, but keeping your clothes on. People like it when I play with my pianist. Um, it sounds good. But anyways, uh, <laughs> God love a pun. That, that came so, out of nowhere. Yeah. Again, that's why I pointed and told you to keep the car crash right close on the soundboard there. I get distracted. Um, so when I played at the fancy hotel over in Ashland, like last time I played there, I played for about 20 minutes and got $17 in tips. Well, that's, that's better money than DoorDash. Yeah, that's not bad um, at all. And I thought, well, you know, I've been fucking around in Columbus. I wonder what they got going on in terms of pianos. And so I went over and I played at the 
I actually have a piano gallery where they sell pianos and um, you know, I, I went in there twice and the guy was like, oh, we're about to close. And, uh, but I, I, I got in there real early this time. So it was the third time I went and I sat down to play and then I started playing something real soft and pretty. And he was like, oh, I, it, you're pretty good. That sounds good. Okay, it's fine. You know, he kind of relaxed. And then I got to play in um, Ocho Tio, I think, and it got a little bit loud. He's like, you know, I'm, I'm trying to make some phone calls here. And are you going to buy one of these? I was like, eventually. He's like, oh, okay. And and then I just finished up the song and left because, no, I don't have $55,000 to buy a grand piano right now. That costs more than my car. Um, but anyways, uh, oh, Lord. I'm, I was looking around and I saw that there's uh, several bars and hangouts clubs and that that have piano so the first one i went to check out um i remember their name now that i think of it but i'm not gonna say it because you know the warning signs were there when when i got there and i saw the rainbow flag out front and everything and then walked inside talking with people and it, you know it's like when you look down on your gaydar screen and the whole screen is just fucking solid anyways um so i go in there and i see there you got a little grand piano up there and i i asked the guy it's like uh it's all right if i play some music for y'all i can just do instrumental or something Oh, well, the owner is, is not here right now, and we only let musicians play on that. Oh, well, Cold. good Just thing so I'm a musician. That's right. <laughs> well, you're in luck. Do you want to see my license? Oh, well, um, I was like, I mean, I, I can prove it to you pretty quick. And in a, in a soft volume, we'll call it piano volume um he's like yeah i have to check that out with the owner and everything i was like well i mean you can call him and ask him he was like oh well i'm kind of busy right now and i look around there's like one person drinking a beer and there's no one else in there and he's not doing anything but he is wearing a fanny pack and birkenstocks with toe socks so he's gay yeah, well, I mean, yeah, I'm not going to say the name of the place, but um, it, he then is like, you're not going to be playing that piano today. So are you here to get a drink or anything else? Oh, okay. Well, I mean, I, I've got my own electric, electronic Yamaha piano. I guess I could play on the patio outside. I would still need to check with the owner about that. Only musicians are allowed to play outside on the patio riser. Well, again, um, I will Walked point right out that, it. That, that I am, in fact, a musician. Uh-huh. And I walk outside and it's, it says, like, inclusive to all tribes and peoples. And I'm like, well, I'm Wow. Obviously, I, obviously I not. And I said and out loud, too. well, I look at the sign and there's like five or six people yeah. out smoking on the patio. I got signs everywhere saying no smoking marijuana here. Uh, it should have been my clue right there. Um, but, well, yeah. I see the big inclusive sign, inclusivity sign. With Every, except, except marijuana smokers. And I'm like, welcome well, to everybody except for you guys. The Cherokee tribe, I must say. Not very welcoming to Cherokee musicians, fuckers, or or potheads, and it's legal in Ohio now. But anyway, so I go back up to Lambeau Town, swimming amongst the Benzies and the Mercedes and the BMWs and all that stuff. Janice oh, I'm Joplin. sure there's a few Lexus. Oh yeah. yeah. 
in oh insufferable amount of fucking Teslas and electronic. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't forget the fucking scooters and the e-bikes and oh my god, it's well, it's a smart city. Easton is definitely a smart city and gates everywhere and gate codes and but there's this really posh place called Mozart's Patisserie and Cafe featuring live piano music. Well, I see that. And I'm like, oh, God damn, I got to go check this place out. Well, I pull up to the place to park. Dude busts out the fucking side door with the tuxedo and everything. Cuff length. Bam. You know? Yeah. I wonder where he's going. He's to the walking nines. right over to my car. He's like, would you like me to park your car? He ran over to your car. Oh, I, I, I'm just a piano player. Oh, you can park over there. Oh, good. I don't have the $50 to pay you for a tip for valet parking. Right. So I pull over there and walk in and the owner's like interviewing people or something. And she's like, well, I've got the piano on player mode right now. And I'll go over there and sure enough, it's doing like piano player. I've never seen a Yamaha grand piano that does piano player, oh, yeah, but I got them. Yeah. It's like an $85,000 piano. Um, Sounds about right. And it's doing its thing over there and it's playing some rock on and off or no, it was um, playing uh Hungarian dance by uh, Rimsky Korsakov. Oh. But, but anyways, I was gonna um, guess shout Chopin. out to the classical music fans. Um, then then it switched over to Prokofiev. I guess it was stuck on Russians that day. Fucking communists. So uh, the owner of the place. Hey, Rachmaninoff wasn't a commie. I mean, dude, he had the cannolis, the mascarpone, all the finest patisserie, you know, even German Bavarian. Yeah, I will and, fight you over some Rachmaninoff. All that stuff. And so and I was talking to the the uh, the lady chef there behind the main counter about it. And she's like, oh, well, we have a pianist that comes in on Fridays and Saturdays, our main days. But we open up Thursdays to start baking and getting it together. And, you know, so we have our kitchen open from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Uh, and then we're, and then, you know, dining areas open until five, um, you know, and sell whatever we've made. Um, ballet parking only. So it's, it's Mozart's patisserie and cafe. So uh, I'm talking to her while the owner gets done. And then he's over there uh, kibitzing with people. And so she's like, well, here's the owner if you want to meet him. So I, I go to shake his hand. I was like, hey, I'm DJ Hyon, and he says something back in broken English. So, you know, I was like, you know, Asalaamu Alaikum. Well, then he immediately hits me back with the Wa Alaikum Asalaam. And it was like, and, and uh, my Asalaam, and looked me right in the eye and walked away. And just like, oh, well, you're in. Come back tomorrow uh, at 2.45 when the... Uh, the, the pianist will be done. Um, we've got the uh, the pianist for the uh, Columbus Philharmonic uh, Orchestra. Uh, he'll be playing tomorrow from until 2.45. And then uh, we normally just put it on player, but uh, you can pick up and finish out the date for him. Wow. Oh, wow. Sure. Sure. I'll, I'll, I guess I need to find a tuxedo. <laughs> I'm definitely going to wear a tie. <laughs> wow. Well, congratulations. And that's how you get discovered. That's one of the ways. That's how you get found. Yeah. You you Go can also you can also $80, just uh, offer piano up your at a ballet parking only that works too. Posh fucking French patisserie. Yeah. Which is a pastry shop. Yeah. Yeah, another way Both to make it bakery and cafe. Yeah. Another way to make it in the music business is uh, to uh, sacrifice one of your bandmates. Right. You know, just kind of uh, random. It doesn't really matter which one. Work for the Foo Fighters. Yeah. I was going to say, just ask Dave Grohl. Yeah. You'll sell millions. It's worked for him several times. It, 
Quite a few. Yeah. Yeah. More than once. More than once. See, Chris Novoselic was smart. He got out of the music business, got more into politics. What is he doing now? I have I have no clue. I um, haven't heard staying anything. Staying the fuck about away him. from Dave Grohl and Dust. Well, duh. Staying alive. Uh, exactly. There you go. Exactly. <laughs> Wouldn't you? How many I'm sorry. The, the warning signs were all there, Drizzle. <laughs> Are you kidding me? God, like geez. the parallels between Dave Grohl and Jim Morrison are fucking retarded. Poor Taylor. Poor Taylor. Feel, feel bad. Probably never saw it coming. Yeah. Never saw it coming. Yeah, you know, they convinced the children of this uh, fucking fantastical lifestyle that oh these God. people supposedly live. You know, and and fucking American kids grow up believing this shit. I know because I was one of them. Oh, my God, it gets even better. I've got another piece of mail to open here. Oh, wow. More mail time. Y'all ready for another dose of the mailbox? That's right. <laughs> that would be number three tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Number three, the uh, magic card. All right. Verified opinion studies. The fuck? Oh, wow. Whose opinion and why? Dear Daniel, you are one of a small number of people chosen to participate in the 2024 Verified Opinion Studies Mail Survey, an important nationwide analysis of communications that voters in the United States receive. Oh my God. This I think survey, you should take this seriously. Yeah, I'm got my attention now. And, and it's official. It's got a fucking QR code. Oh shit. Blammo. Wow. Um, Does it have a seal? Yes. Uh, this survey is not affiliated with any political party or candidate and all responses no, of course are not. confidential. No, no, no. Yes. Um, so what's it got to do with teeth? Confidential. I've got that coverage in my plan. Your household was randomly chosen to represent the opinions and experiences of people in your area. For, for participating in the survey provides such critical data for our research. Uh, we are studying the political mail that you receive over the course of 2024. This might be political mailings about candidates, issues, or reminders to vote. To participate in the study, you'll take photos of any political mail you receive on a daily basis and upload the photos to a secure website. That sounds like work. Compensation for your participation in this study, we send you $10 to join and a dollar for each piece of mail you scan and upload. Huh. You can participate on your tablet or smartphone by scanning the QR code provided. If you're unable to scan huh. the QR code, you can type this link into your browser. Survey Monkey. Well, that it's so great that I got this letter at the same time I got my political mail from Shit Sniff down there. Let's see. Let me get it back. Wait, which one? Which one is shit? Thanks, sniff? thanks for the mail, Frank LaRose. That's an extra dollar. Ah, um, there you go. <laughs> uh, you can use that for. Uh, you can do cigarette money from that. Yeah, and that that's the first uh, piece of political mail that I've actually gotten thus far. Wow. Yeah, and, come to think and of by it, by Jove, I got it with my first verified opinion. So I guess it's official, folks down the stretch they come we're yeah. in the home stretch of our super duper not make believe election democratic festival yeah oh man well, not really home stretch but well considering that it's been going on since like the middle of last year yeah i guess we're in the home stretch now but i mean cons all things considered it's basically 10 weeks before the election yeah, yeah, yeah. That's well, we're in the last ten weeks. It's it. This is the home stretch, folks. This is where you know you better whip that horse for all it's worth if you're going to win place or show at this point, buddy. That's right. We're on the home stretch. Like uh, like Kamala used to tell Willie, 
Yeah. It's time to nut up or shut up. That's right. Oh, which reminds me. That does remind me. Okay, I don't need the weather in St. Louis anymore. Oh, my God. No wonder I had the radar set to East St. Louis, Missouri. I'm sorry, East St. Louis, Illinois. That's right. And we're lucky to have survived. Um, I mean, I there's think... A, there's a permanent dark cloud in that spot on the radar. I it never it goes away. Stay in East St. Louis, Illinois for more than three hours continuously... You literally have a 33% chance of being a victim of a violent crime. Probably, yeah. I'm surprised they haven't just firebombed East East St. Louis yet. Just like fucking wipe it off the map and start over. I mean, seriously. I'm going to say if they start rounding up people in the camps, East St. Louis is probably a good place to go. Because nobody's, I mean, when they're rounding up people to take them to camp, they're not going to go into East St. Louis to round up That's people. True. They know better. You get they're shot not, there. Right. Like the, they're also, not stupid, Drizzle. They're also not going to go into West Memphis. That's no. another. That's another safe Ooh. spot. Ooh. Ooh. If you see West Memphis on the road sign, turn the fuck around. I don't care if it's interstate. Turn around. They got frontage roads. They can just pull on and pull off. It's like you're in Texas. It's, already. it's actually funny that uh, that you mentioned that. Because there, there was the potential of me driving through West Memphis on my way down to Acapulco, and I was like, "No, we're going to take a detour." Yeah. <laughs> it's like, no, we're not doing that. Yeah, I wouldn't do that either. Yeah, that that was a smart move there. Definitely, I a know. Smart move. Well, one of my former exes uh, used to live in Memphis, so I know all about it. So let's see here. Um. Oh, I I don't think I shared the uh, the new song with John Trudell. Which one is that? that? Um, where John Trudell's talking about how the Nazis actually won World War II, because it's the follow up to the song that I did with um, David Ike, the Bloody Dots stipulation. Unfortunately. I don't know if it's we the have. Whiskey bear because I made this song for Whidbey Bear. Shout out Unidozer. Yeah. Um, spiritualization. Uh, and I think he might be on his way to uh, what do they call it? Bertaria. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, Bertaria. Um, uh, that fella actually remastered the sound and everything for that, but I don't have that on the audio to this song right now. So, well, that sucks. Uh, but the video is, is is pretty intense because it features um, Rio Rio Ishi and Noda, the two towns in the uh, Greater Iwate Prefecture of Mainland Champaign. Uh, footage of the um, tsunami and like. The first video um, of NODA. Which tsunami? Now, NODA. The one, the Tohoku earthquake and tsunami of March the 11th, 2011. Okay. That struck Japan uh, roughly 13 and a half years ago. Um, the first video where it shows the big uh, tsunami wave coming into NODA in the harbor and it's like the wave is so tall it's above the birds flying around because the wave is like over 100 feet taller i don't know it's insane it's fucking insane and the guy takes his camera and he zooms in you can see just all kinds of flocks of birds and everything flying in front of the wave which is another 20 30 feet over their heads and like all white and spray on the top um yeah I, I had dreams about that you know i couldn't fucking imagine i couldn't imagine yeah here it is all right oh wait i don't want to do that yet let's go to screen share 
yeah i just i don't i can't do the ads man i can't do commercials Driz. i just i can't man. i i can't do like normal media period yeah well we're back on the on the yo 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 ho ho and a bottle of rumble all up in the teals okay so here we go <laughs> Uh, and don't worry for those listeners that hear the Japanese, uh, just use the uh, English subtitles. Oh, wow. Look at all the boats. There it is. Look, look, look behind the bridges. Look at that, Drizzle. You see that wall of fucking water, dude? Oh, shit. Holy shit, man. That's like a hundred foot tall wave. It was, what was 35 meters. Whatever 35 times 3.3 .3 is. More than 100 feet. Wow. That's a fucking wave of water, dude. I was thinking, oh my god, I got good fun. Now he's gonna zoom in, you'll see the bird. Live from the three hundred and Yeah. That there are two perceptions of reality. Yeah, see? There's a oh, bird by the fucking wave. There's a uh, god, religious god. perception of reality. And there's a spiritual perception of reality. The religious perception of reality is about guilt, sin, and blame, and that's the trap. That's the chain that holds every citizen. The spiritual perception of reality is about responsibility. We are all responsible. We're not guilty, we're responsible. And it's trying to make our way through these two perceptions of reality. That seems to be the biggest problem we're confronted with as human beings on the planet. Because the religious perception of reality is, talking, is about dominance. It's not about it's not about responsibility. It's about subservience. Interesting. Religious perception of reality is about life, respect, responsibility. I think that it's reality. I think that the new world order is one for one. You know, I, 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 me in my own mind, comes closer and closer to that. That it, it is very real. Oh, I think I have more than that. Yeah. Even though Germany and the Axis lost <laughs> World War II, I don't think it's the Nazis. I think it's the Nazis won World War II. Yeah, I know. And I think that there are authoritarian methods of behavior control, mind manipulation, converting okay. the human spirit energy so that they can be the need for their technology. I think all of this stuff is moving right on down the line. And, and, and I think that there really is no political solution or an economic solution that exists right now. Okay. And I think that we need to get a clear perception of reality where we, where we are in reality. Take responsibility. And by using our intelligence, intelligence create the solutions that we need to create. Because right now, I mean, it's just, we're just more fuel, you know, somewhere, it's, somewhere under the religious perception of reality, the decision was made that the earth was the dominion of man, man, man therefore could plunder the earth, that man could take whatever they wanted from the earth. But somewhere in the progress of this mindset, man has forgotten that we are part of the earth. And just the way that the system that technological man has devised to take the resources of the earth and turn them into fuel. And energy, they've taken on spirit, 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 and they're, they're turning it through the process, through their process of civilization, they're taking our spirit, turning it in to energy, to run their system. We need to remember what happened to the earth that was to us. You know, I'm not advocating any of politics or any of it. We as a soul, you know, try to do the best that we can do, and that's what I'm trying to do.
way that the system that technologic man has devised to take resources of the earth and turn them into fuel and energy. They've taken our spirit, 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 spirit. That was good. Yeah. You're gonna have to send me all of these links so I can put them in the notes. The tsunami is more bigger than Meiji era. It's a bigger than Meiji era tsunami. <laughs> well, it's uh, funny that you should think of uh, this one because I was chatting with Biscotti in the Odyssey live stream chat, and he was saying in his part of the country, which is the Northeast, they had catastrophic flooding just a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, that's right. And they're about to have some more right the fuck now because it is just raining cats and fucking dogs from like Petersburg, Virginia, all the way up through PG right now. Prince George wow. County, Maryland for the uninitiated. Well, that's basically the entire length of Virginia. It's basically run of the 85 and the 95 corridor, like yeah. all the way to pretty much Patapska County, Baltimore area. Yep. And just solid red. So, it, and it's Good tracking God. on a northeast wow. course that's going to run the northeast corridor. So, look out, all you Connecticut kittens. It's going to get awful wet in the litter box. Uh, some of them probably like it. You know what I was <laughs> noticing, Yona? Because I've been staring at this crisp five dollar uh, American Federal Reserve note that we received for our work with uh, Nielsen, awesome. the Nielsen uh, Media Research Corporation LLC, Incorporated. All um, right. I was noticing. I don't know if you guys can see this real good or not because of the lighting the in the studio. But. Do y'all remember when our money was actually green? Yeah, it's not green anymore. It's not green. This is like red. It's right. like a reddish brown, and there's there's like green on the edges. But this isn't. I don't. I don't believe this well, is that, actually that money. Well, that keeps it different from the orange ten, you know, or the purple fifty. Or the blue 100. The hundreds are blue? Yeah, the Ben Franklin's got a lot of blue going on there. Oh, wow. Well, I haven't seen a new one of those. Yeah, blue in hundreds, quite a while. purple 50s, um, green 20s. Wow. So it's like every color Orange of the tens, rainbow on our money like now. Monopoly money. Um, yeah, basically. And I got to say, you, you did went out with a really nice place in Jasper on... Um, is it Mediterranean Avenue? Yes. It's nice. It's yeah. nice though. So I mean it, it's a smaller town. There there is no boardwalk or park place in Jasper. You, you gotta go up to uh Lake Sam Rayburn to 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 find that that part of town. Uh, uh, you know, yeah, that's, I mean technically Houston, but because you know that, that that's big city money coming up through there. That that's why they have condominiums there. Because who right. in the fuck else would pay condo fees for somewhere that's three hours from the fucking 410 beltway and anyway right <laughs> and and uh what two hours from the gulf yeah yeah but, but five minutes from lake lake sam so you know let's say shout out sadly yeah. ravers um uh oh hang on a sec i can't remember if we drove by lake sam or not on the way up to Pueblo. I don't think that we did. But I can't quite remember. I wasn't actually paying that close attention on the way out. I think I was distracted by something, but I can't remember what it was. That was almost two months ago. I can't believe it's been that long already. Uh, it's got a flash. There we go. Flashlight. Oh, wow. Apparently, there's uh, an investigation taking place at the Yonastead, ladies and gentlemen. Not exactly sure what the uh, matter is, but, uh, huh. I was not prepared to, to have to fill air all by myself. Let's see. I do have some notes written down, though. 
Occasionally that happens. In case you guys are wondering, I am quite high right now. Um, shout out to everyone listening in Bluffdale. So somebody decided to drop on to the Odyssey stream last night. And uh, it's funny because that is uh, the least watched of all of the Liberty Radio channels at this point. And they decided to leave a thumbs down for us. <laughs> Random, out of the blue, not even, I don't know. I don't know what we did or said to, to make this person so unhappy. But yeah, just, uh, okay. You know, if, if, if some people in the crowd are horrified or hating it, you're doing it right. It, I don't it, know it, why it, you're still watching if you're in that condition. It, but, it, it's yeah. not going to be funny to everybody because, you know, for it to be funny, it's got to be at least partly true. And then if it rings true, particularly with some, it, it's, you know, it's going to be taken personally. And so you should just know right now that, yes, it was meant personal because, you know, the jokes are meant to be offensive. Yeah. Many of them. Yeah, I will admit to that. People take themselves too seriously. I mean, I've been guilty of it. I, I had to deliver an order of Cincinnati chili today. And I, oh, God. I personally hate to even call it chili. Due to the presence of large cut up pieces of overcooked spaghetti mixed in with heaping amounts of cinnamon. That's not chili. In the chili. That's not chili. I don't in know Cincinnati, what that is. No, no. We, we, no, we need to settle this right now. All right. We're, we're, we're I don't know what the hell that is that you're she describing. Can back me up on this. Chili, it is not. God. I don't know what and the fuck stinks. is wrong with those people. God, it stinks. You know, when you smell chili, you should smell like the beans and like the meat. Right, and the spices. You shouldn't smell. It shouldn't smell like a Cinnabon, okay? It should not smell like... Donuts and cinnamon, like, a, and you shouldn't pot, you shouldn't look uh, through the clear lid of the cap and see nothing but floating pieces of one inch lengths of spaghetti. Um, that's just so fucking wrong. Seriously, man. what is wrong oh, with those people? It's fucking wrong with you. And then they put it on hot dogs. I don't want pieces of spaghetti and fuck, I'm done. I, I'm fucking done, man. Jesus Christ. I mean, I've heard I mean, of putting we, like the, the look, some people break up potato chips and put them on their hamburgers or hot dogs. Yeah. That's not weird. That's a little Spaghetti weird. Spaghetti on the hot dog? That's definitely weird. That's Are you that bored, really? Spaghetti on a hot dog. So now you know if you have some guests and they're making their hot dog and they ask you, by the way, uh, where's the mustard? Oh, yeah, we're having hot dogs. Here's some mustard. Seems perfectly normal. Oh, wait, wait. Uh, could, do you have any ketchup too? Uh, uh, sure, sure. Give them the ketchup. Still seems normal. See, then this they is add, why oh, I wait, think... Do you have any pickle relish? D sure, sure. Still seems normal. Then they ask for the cinnamon. Cinnamon? What the fuck you need cinnamon for? The story I'm is going nowhere good. Yeah. What the fuck's wrong with you? What are you from? Oh, I'm from Cincinnati. Oh, uh, well, here... You want me to boil some spaghetti for you? Should just have like yeah, a giant sure. R branded into their forehead. 
No, I'm serious. I, I think this is why oh. God allowed us to create nuclear weapons. So we can oh. just get rid of Cincinnati. <laughs> oh, that's funny you would mention nuclear weapons in Cincinnati. There, there's a whole part of southwest Cincinnati that's like a no man's land now because it's been so toxically poisoned. All right, um, well, let's finish the job then. The euphemism that'll, for the site that'll solve this problem called, real um, fast. Fernald Feeds. F-E-R-N-A-L-D. Fernald That sounds impressive. Feeds. Sounds innocuous, right? That, that, that doesn't sound... That's not uh, scary uh, to me. I mean, it, it sounds weird. Yeah, fernal feeds. Like what? Would they have like corn and soybeans or something? No. No, this is a different type of feed. Um, let's go. Fernal Feeds Materials Production Center. Uh, all right, so <clears throat> let's see here. Do, 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 do. Oh, I just Hamilton let... County, Ohio, yeah. is home to Cincinnati, and that lovely chili with the floating pieces of spaghetti and clumps, clumps of cinnamon, so that you know you get a spoonful. Fucking and there's savages! This weird, deformed looking bean. And you bite into it, and it's a, a solid clump of fucking cinnamon. And you're like, <laughs> like literally choking. Anyway, it, oh my God, Bruce, this is terrible. I don't. It, and they call it chili. Well, no, I, I'm going to say no, this is why. No, it is. No, it is not chili. What are we doing? What are you making me so, put up on the screen? Is this family so, friendly? Uh, so this is what Fernald Feeds or Fernald Feed Materials Production Center. Do I need to get my glasses? Uh, That's and really this small. Aerial view, Good God. Uh, spoiler alert. It, it doesn't look like this anymore. Um, it's all been bulldozed down flat. What is that? Infernal Fields? Fernald Fields. Um, so let's. Sounds like the plains of hell. That's what it sounds like. Okay, how do you... Oh, my God. How do I get back out? Um, what, uh, the screen share? I don't know. I can just uh, do this. Oh, wait. Let's just use the back thing. There we go. All right. So, oh, Fernal Feeds... Back. Yeah, I guess we do. ...is a toxic super fun site. All right. Located within the Crosby Township in Hamilton Super County, fun. Ohio. That's better than a regular fun. Um, and that's um, that's about, fun with a D, right? That's not a super fun. Site. It's a super fun site with a D, but the D is silent. Put the fun in super fun. Um, and so it's right there in Cincinnati. Um, Fernald came under criticism in 1984. Shout out George Orwell. Uh, when it was learned that the Fernal Feeds plant was releasing millions of pounds of uranium dust into the atmosphere, causing major radioactive contamination of surrounding areas, oh yeah, it's news good for about the plant's operations bones. led to the 1989 closure of the nearby Fort Scott camp. Then the oldest Roman Catholic summer camp in the country. So, yes, the the home of America's favorite cinnamon spaghetti chili lost the, the nation's oldest Roman Catholic summer camp where I'm guaranteed there was lots of pedophilia going on and they had to find somewhere else to do it due to the radiation. Wow. Um, the rods were just too hot around the campfire. Um, in 1948, the Atomic Energy Commission, predecessor to the U.S. Department of Energy, established a large-scale integrated facility for the production of fabricated uranium fuel cores by chemical and metallurgical techniques. The plant was known as the Feed Materials Production Center 
since the uranium fuel cores it produced were the feed for the plutonium production reactors. And you need the plutonium to make the big nuki bombs. So these nuclear reactors were located at Oak Ridge, Tennessee, and the Savannah River site in South Carolina, and at Hansford in the state of Washington. Uh, and Farnold produced all of the uh, feeds for all of the nuclear plants producing weapons grade plutonium. Um, the plant was located in the rural town of Fernald, about 20 miles west of Cincinnati, Ohio. Uh, releases from the Fernald site to the surrounding area resulted in exposure to the community residents, including ionizing radiation, soluble and insoluble forms of uranium, and various other hazardous chemicals. Um, now, the one that I keep driving past every day, that would be the Portsmouth gaseous diffusion. Gaseous plant. diffusion? Yes. Uh, let's see if that... Did that, that sounds stinky. Blam. All right. Portsmouth gaseous diffusion plant. So named because of its proximity to the city of Portsmouth. But it's pronounced porch meth. Mm. And uh, when you're driving down U.S. Route 52 through porch meth, look at any porch, you'll see them doing the tweaker dance because they're on porch meth. Right. Um, it's it's a Midwestern tradition. Uh, so uh, the plant also a West Coast one tradition. of three gaseous diffusion plants that operated in the United States. Also a Southern alongside tradition. Alongside K-25 in Oak Ridge. And the Paducah gaseous diffusion plant near Paducah. Yeah, people um, on the East Coast do cocaine. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the former plant facilities are currently undergoing decontamination, decontamination and decommissioning. Some site facilities are still overseen by the United States Enrichment, Enrichment Corporation, a subsidiary of Centris Energy. Uh, and that is a super super toxic site uh in august 1952 you uh, the aec atomic energy commission selected the Sayoto township a rural area occupied by family-owned farms as the site for a new gaseous diffusion plant to produce highly enriched uranium-235 for use in military reactors and nuclear weapons production located at the junction of the Sayoto and ohio rivers the site was chosen due to the availability of electric energy. And so we've got coal burning plants up and down the Ohio River Valley that still supply power to um, Paducah's gaseous diffusion plant and um, the Portsmouth gaseous diffusion works. And it also provided power to the Fernald Feeds plant in Cincinnati until... Uh, they had to shut it down because it was just spewing uranium dust everywhere. Um, but that's why the show is called Get Fact Harder. You see, if enough people are exposed to uranium dust over a 50-year period of time, eventually they'll think that it's awesome to choke on a huge lump of fucking cinnamon floating between the pieces of spaghetti in this bowl of shit that you want to call chili. Well, at a certain point, you're not tasting the difference between the uranium dust and the cinnamon. That's right. You and know. now you know so you don't, why you just they don't know any different. Shit. That's why there's shit in the chili in Cincinnati. It's because of the Fernald Feeds um, plant. And Finish now you know the Fernald them. Feeds has nothing to do with feeds and everything to do with radiation needs. Uh, but... There is a good side to that story. In the because words of Nimrata Haley. So much uranium dust. Finish out, them. It closed the Fort Scott pedophile summer camp for priests and altar boys. Well, that's a silver lining. I know, right? It, yeah. It's a, it's a glowing silver lining, but it hey, it it's a silver lining hey, nonetheless. There you go. And may, you know, may it light the way. Nice, happy, warm, fuzzy feeling. There you go. 
You know, I remembered we because we only got <laughs> I think we got about like five minutes left. Um, but I remembered a couple of weeks ago, Yona. You remember when we went out uh, to Pueblo for the Third right. Eye Carnival, right? And then we, when we were on the way back, I think it was. I think we were still in Oklahoma. It was right before we were about to cross into Texas. We stopped. I can't remember if it was for gas or just to use the bathroom or or what it was, but there was that bus of, was it Haitian gentlemen? Yes. Yes. They were speaking the IECN. Yeah. 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 Like a chartered bus. There was like two or three charter buses. I mean, it was a gang of fucking Haitians. As in a lot, not like as an an, an affiliated. Right, crime right, 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 right. They weren't like Pardon throwing up signs and had like patches and and I you mean, know, I mean, neck like tats and all that shit. A whole bunch shit. of them, not right. Anyway. right, right, right. Yeah, it was a gaggle. It was a gaggle of Haitians. A gaggle of Haitians. I think that's the appropriate term. Yeah. Did you did you happen to hear where they were headed? Like where they were coming from, where they were headed. Well, they had arrived in Houston, and they were bound for Des Moines, Iowa, in Iowa. Did they say why they were? I mean, strike you as odd. Like, did, is that is that like a normal destination for Haitians? Like, is Iowa a big uh, a vacation spot? I'm going to say For they're the probably going to be uh, doing some work with corn or chickens. Interesting. They're they're laborers. I wonder if Rantcast would know. They're they're laborers being brought in. Hmm. And and you can tell Haitians from the other, you know, like the Southeast Asians are different from the Haitians because, <laughs> you know, when Haitians shit by the riverbank, they face the river. When Southeast Asians shit on the riverbank, they face away from the river. That's how you can tell. I've heard that about Indians as well. Yeah. Yeah. But to be fair, last few days in Columbus, I've seen some good old fashioned red, white, and blue American buttholes pooping on the sidewalk. So, oh, yeah. yeah, it's all the rage in uh, Northern California. Bangladesh or India or someone to find. That's right. You know, sidewalks. Yeah, some poopers. good old I American mean, they're feces. California. They're probably in all 50 states at this point, to, to be honest. Getting close, most likely. I've heard uh, uh, Austin is uh, just about to get out of control. Oh, um, you won't believe what happened to me today. For the first time in my life, my terrible smile with my meth grill. Mm hmm actually worked to my advantage pulled up to one of those monster fucking intersections where there's two right turn lanes three lanes going through two left turn lanes fucking stoplight where you know a six lane road is meeting a six lane road and it's all stoplights and shopping malls everywhere fucking columbus lambo town easton new albany westerville so you know pull up and I'm in a far left lane right by the big island where they've got dogwood trees and all this landscaping. And there's a panhandler there. He's like, he says, I'm smiling because I'm happy to be alive. Help me stay that way. And he's got it written on his cardboard sign and he's going from window to window. And he comes up to my car and smiles at me. Yeah. And I smile back at him. And he kind of jumped back and dropped his sign down. Just kind of waved. Did he give you some money? Walked away. I was like, bro, I, I was going to give you some change. Where are you going? Like, it, it's, it was the teeth, wasn't it? My meth teeth just got me out of a fucking panhandle. Holy shit. Wow. It's That's awesome. kind of like a superpower. I know. I was like, wow, here he is panhandling everybody. He took one look at me and my smile and was like, ah, never mind. Yeah, you need it more than I do. <laughs> God damn. Well, he did have better teeth than I did. So I guess that's what it was. 
Maybe he was afraid you were going to try to do like a switcheroo. Yeah. It's like, oh shit, he's after my teeth. That's right. I got to get out of here. <laughs> to the guy on Morse Road at the I-71 ramp. <laughs> there you go. What's up, homie? <laughs> I was going to give you change, man. You shouldn't have walked away, bro. I care about the homeless. I write songs about it, for Christ's sake. Local yokel and shit. Anyway. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I mean, my show is called The Peasants Podcast, for crying yeah. out loud. That's, you know, it's it's about the invisible people. And, and it let me know that, you know, he knew that he wasn't invisible to me. And I know I wasn't invisible to him. That's right. Otherwise, he would have dropped the sign and just walked away. Like, <laughs> wow. Oh, wait, never mind. <laughs> oh, wait, you, you should check and see if he's out there uh, next week. Next time a pain handler comes to my window, I'm doing my tweaker dance. Fuck it, man. Been practicing. Besides, you know, when I work, I'm wired to the max for two or three days. It's true. Yeah. Well, you wrote a song about it. Say good night, That's Gracie. why we love all y'all out there. Keep staying powerful. Keep staying free. And smoke more of the weeds. Which well, totally getting the guy done. Woohoo! Yeah, we'll see you in a couple of weeks, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, and open lines tomorrow night. Don't forget about that. Good night, everybody.